Okay, you guys, so it is day number two of painting flowers. I'm following along with um, Helen Dealtree's flower prompts. And so here we go. Today's flower is primrose. And so I'm going to set up the um, camera here. I have it hopefully a little bit better than yesterday. I'm going to um, get it set up so that you can see my paper. So I decided to tone my paper today. Hey guys. Decided to tone my paper because I like painting on, um, on a colored ground a lot better than I like painting on plain white. I always paint uh, on colored or toned um, canvas that I paint first myself and so I wanted to just try that and see if I could get that to um to I don't know have more contrast I like having that that medium color so we're gonna paint a primrose today and I'm going to look and see I have my iPad here I was gonna try to open up the stories on um my iPad so I could see your guys's comments so that it didn't just disappear uh, well, I'm not seeing how to do that, so we'll just go ahead and get going. Okay, so today's flower is primrose, and I am going to try to do a botanical style painting. So actually, I think I'm going to switch to my smaller round brush. And um, I love those botanical, you know, um, botanical illustrations from from old books that have like the stem and then a few of the the flowers so I'm gonna try that out today and see um, how that goes so I know primroses can grow in really huge bunches but I think I'm going to um, try for just a few on a stem because I love that look and that's a little different so it'll be something fun to try um, I have two uh, photo illustration sort of References, that's the word I'm looking for. I have two references that I have up on my desktop over here that I'm going to be glancing at. Um, and one is of a botanical illustration of a primrose, and then one is actually the color of ty the type of primrose that I want to try to replicate somewhat. But like I was doing yesterday with the tulip, I'm going to try to stay fairly loose. Um, that is my challenge because... I um I love the loose effortless sort of look and so I don't want to get too uptight. Oh, I need to get some more water in here to help it flow. I don't want to get too uptight um and get into all the details like an actual botanical illustration. I just want to sort of do that that uh stem look where it's sort of an isolated stem of the flower for you to admire. Okay. So there's one, and then I think there's another one branching off here. I think this one we're going to get up a little higher. Then there's one here, and then there's sort of a... There's some leaves that are going on. I think, I think I'll go ahead and wait to do the leaves till the end. So that's sort of the framework of my painting right now. And I think there's actually a stalk with some buds that's coming up right there. So we'll kind of leave that for now. Okay. So the ones I'm painting, they're white with sort of a pink, some pink details and some yellow details. So first I'm just going to layer in the white. And we'll see how this goes. So their little petals are sort of heart shapes. I can get let's see size wise I'm just trying to think about the size of the blooms compared to the size of paper I think that's okay so we'll just go ahead and layer in their little heart-shaped petals and if they get a little bit big that's okay I like doing oversized flowers, so if they end up a little larger than they should be, it's always prettier in my opinion. <laughs> there we go. 
Okay, so I'm going to paint the next one. The green is getting into the white a little bit, but I'm not too concerned because I can always just stroke a little bit more white over it and um, just kind of cover it up. And the other colors will also, you know, the second and third layers will also kind of hide that. Okay, so here's our next one. And hopefully this view is a little bit better than last and then yesterday's video and I'm super excited. I finally um, ordered a uh, iPhone, like an official iPhone tripod that hopefully I'll be able to position and you'll be able to see my paper from above, but it's not coming till Saturday and so um, we'll have to kind of survive with this sideways <laughs> looking from the side view for the rest of this week. And then hopefully beginning next week, when I do these daily flower paintings, you'll actually have a much nicer view. So fingers crossed that that will work out, that the, you know, the tripod will actually, um, you know, hold my phone correctly and all of that stuff. But I'm excited. I love videos shot from above and this is, but this is the best that I can do right now. Okay, and then we're going to have one, it's like right up here. Now, I kind of, hmm, I'm already feeling like this might be a little bit on the sparse side, like there's nothing really over here except a leaf, I think, but oh well, we'll, we'll keep going with it for now and see how it looks. Okay, so this one is almost like a folded up one where you don't really see that much of the inside. So this is a petal kind of overlapping over the front. And then it's another petal right here. Okay, those will get a little bit more distinguished looking as we add in the other colors. Okay. All right, so there's the beginnings. Um, the next color I think I'm going to do is a light pink. Oops, I have some green in this color. Ooh, okay, I need to think I need to rinse out my brush. Okay, and we'll get some more white up here. We'll add just a little bit of pink. Yeah, I like this color. I especially decided to um, <clears throat> to tone my paper today because of the flowers having so much white in them. Yesterday when I was painting the tulip, it was a little touch and go, I feel like, with the edges where it was just hard for me to really see the edges of some of the petals because the paper, of, the color of the paper was just so similar to the color of the edges they were sort of a cream color so um, I'm going to probably start just toning my paper each day I really love toned backgrounds like I was saying before I usually tone my canvases before I paint on them and I feel like it just makes the flowers pop so much more um, and just makes their edges more crisp and then you don't really worry about having white showing up um, around the edges of your you know painted elements because all the white is already covered up and so it just makes the painting feel a little bit more finished. Awesome okay so we've got that and then I'm going to probably add in a little bit of yellow the yellow shapes there's yellow around the edges here. Or no, I'm sorry, not the edges, the center. So there's yellow in the center. So I'm gonna bring my yellow over here and I think I'll start out with this. It's There's sort of a lighter yellow and then a more golden yellow. And the lighter yellow almost is a bit of a greenish, has a greenish tinge to it. So I'm gonna just get a tiny bit of green and a tiny bit of white to just tint the yellow slightly. 
Mm. Nice. That's like a nice, slightly chartreuse color, which I really like. Okay. Hope you guys can see okay here. I'll slide this a little closer. Okay. Um, there, it's basically a shape, just sort of an oval shape that comes up into each petal. Overlapping that pink. And I'm not brushing my yellow over and over again so that I don't pick up that white, and, the white and the pink and start mixing it. Um, You know what, I think I should have brought the pink a little further, so that's something I'm going to fix after I'm done with the yellow on the other ones. I think the pink needs to extend onto that petal a bit more. Okay, we've got this. Ooh, I love this yellowy. It's like sort of an acid, I don't know, acidic <laughs> yellow since it has so much, a little, like a tending towards the cooler green side. Um, and this one, I think you can see just a little bit of that there. And then just a touch of it there and there. Cool. I like that. I'm just trying to decide if I want to add any more. You know, I might end up adding like a hint of another one hiding. I don't know. I'm on the fence about that still. Okay. So now we have a little bit of orange that's just a touch in the center of that yellow. Okay, so we'll get some of my more warm, just regular yellow and add a little bit of red. There we go. Okay, and then we'll do, it's just like a little, I might make it a little stronger orange. There we go. And then we'll add just a little stripe of it in the middle of this cooler yellow and I think I'll start in the center and kind of stroke it outwards. That's nice. Okay. and then we'll add like just a little hint of it there and there I think just on those two sides um all right how much space do I have uh there's a sort of a circular center which I don't know if I left enough space for it I think the orange on some of these needs to come out a little further because some of it's going to get covered up by my center here we go and it kind of just as we go, because I think I um, didn't account for how much this, how much room the center was going to take. Okay, and the center is that same green, but a greeny yellow. But what I'm going to do is change my color because it's just going to blend in with everything if it's exactly the same type of yellow. I think for contrast, I'm going to lighten my greeny yellow just a bit, and then it it's. Um, sort of a center that then has like a little dark hole in the middle with some little um, stamens it looks like. Okay, hopefully that's enough yellow. So now I'm gonna create my little circular shape and then we'll add the stamens in there. Now that has some contrast, just enough to kinda see the difference up against that other green, green yellow. Okay, and those are the only two that really need it. And then there's a bit of a dark shadow, so I'm just gonna get a dark green and go ahead and just go, whoop, just a little dark shadow in the middle of each one. And then there's some little stamens surrounding the, the hole in the center. So I'm gonna maybe just use my plain bright yellow for contrast. Let me hold it up and see. Would that look contrasty enough? I think so. We'll go ahead and try it. Okay, so there's just some little stamens surrounding the hole here. So we'll just make some little, some little dashes there. I don't want to get lost in all the details. Like I was saying, um, sometimes I, I feel like I have that natural tendency to be a real detail person, but I don't really enjoy how that 
feels in my painting practice. I'd rather be looser and do less, less marks, fewer marks there. Okay. We're going to leave that there. Now what the petals have that I haven't added yet is this really dark pink that's actually radiating from the yellow into the light pink. So we're going to go ahead and get just plain straight up dark pink here. And this is just like a rose color. It's not really magenta. It's slightly warmer. It's more towards, I would say, the red, yellow, you know, orange side of the color wheel than like the blue side. So I really like this pink. Okay, let's see. So I'm just going to, it's basically all around the edges of the yellow just radiating. So we're going to just maybe make a, some little... Let's see how that actually works. And it, it does kind of go into the edge of the yellow a little bit, so it's almost like a serrated edge on the yellow. So let's see. Do I like how that's looking? Maybe with a little bit more of a blended stroke. There, I think fewer strokes is good. Okay. I've never painted primroses before, so this is a first. I think this needs to get a little darker. When I was first looking at the photo references, I was like, wow, these are really simple flowers. And so I tried um, like almost so simple that I felt like if I painted them, they would just look, I don't know, a painted version I feel like would almost look boring because they didn't have as many details. Um, so I tried to look for a hybrid that maybe had a little bit more coloration than just like a plain pink one. Um, and so I, I'm happy I found this variation because this one had a lot of color in it. And like in nature, something simple looks so beautiful, but I felt if I painted something that, that simple, it wouldn't be as exciting looking. Okay. But I like how this is turning out. This has enough variation to be interesting. Mm. I feel like the pink needs to get like right up against the edge of the yellow. I think I'm going to come back with my light pink and do um, a few more strokes of it because uh, the, the dark pink is kind of obliterating the light pink. So I need to add some more of it coming off the outer edge of the dark. make a little bit more. I think I'm going to run out. There we go. And I'm just going to add that. Um, it's sort of like a, it's like the in-between color between the dark and the dark pink and the white. So I think that'll help. Yeah, there we go. That adds that sort of step of transition between the two colors that I think was missing because I just didn't have enough of the light pink showing. lovely. There we go. I really like that yellowy green. One of my favorite colors to use in my paintings is chartreuse because it's such a bold, unexpected 
sort of a color and it um, really just pops. And so I like to use it in my leaves and I, I don't think I've ever really used it. No, that's not true. I've used it in the center of um, like centers of ranunculus or flowers like poppies that may have a light green center. Um, I have used it in those and it's so fun. It's just like this zing. And so I love I love shades of yellow that go kind of green. Okay. Not, I feel like this edge needs some work. It's a little bit funky looking still. Like it's not really getting the perspective going. I think maybe it's because the white I think the white needs to get reestablished a little bit like the white of the petal is curling over and that really isn't getting communicated yet so I'll have to come back to that. Okay, we'll add a little bit of light, the light pink there on this last flower. I feel like the same thing for this one. Maybe it needs to get a little bit more of a curled, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that. There's lots of things I'm not sure about when I'm in the middle of a painting and then I have to see as I add things, it just becomes a little bit clearer as each stage progresses. Like, okay, does it need something more there? Or maybe once more stuff is added other areas, it won't look like a problem area anymore. All right. I'm just looking to see. Okay, I'll go ahead and add some more white on this petal. And then I think I'm going to add some more strokes of white there to thicken it and to help it look like that petal that's facing us is actually there. Whoops, I'm out of white. So let's get some more. Okay. Okay, so this one, I think just the thickness of the stroke will help show that there's a petal there. And then I think I'm going to add some sort of shading color on the white so that you can kind of understand that this is a shape that is, you know, three-dimensional. So it doesn't look just so flat. Um... What would be a good color for that? Maybe I'll just use the the really light pink to show that there is some curve going on there. And maybe a little bit of like shadow, but not, not super extreme. There, I like that. Okay. Cool. Okay. And maybe I'll just add a little bit right at this top edge. Yeah, there. Now we'll go back to the white and add a bit of, I think I'll do a little bit of overlap because this is a curling petal. And so it um, is kind of going over the ones that are next to it. Okay, I think, you know what, I think the white might just need a little bit more definition in some of these because you can still sort of see the blue. Yeah, that helps the white just be a bit more crisp there. So we'll go back and just reestablish it in a couple areas here on each petal. There, because when you just do one layer of white, often it's a little bit see-through so we'll thicken it up and it'll add sort of to even just like the texture of the stroke will make it more interesting when it's painted a little bit thicker there we go Okay, and we'll do 
this last one and then I'll just kind of look and see if there's any other finishing I feel like for how wide this petal is the yellow needs to get a little wider just to make the perspective make sense I think I'm gonna go ahead and go back uh, maybe break up that white just a little bit okay I'm gonna go back to the yellow and add just a bit more on that one Sometimes I like to have flowers that you're looking straight down at and then other ones, you know, are facing away from you a little bit. And that perspective is always a little tricky to get, um, especially on a new type of flower where I'm not as, you know, familiar with how I would do it. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. So now I'm going to just add the orange a little bit wider. Yeah, I like that better. I feel like on this petal, what does it need? Maybe it's the, maybe it's the white. I just need to add a few strokes of the white to help it look a little bit thicker there. Okay, we'll leave it at that. Um, now I'm gonna think about the, the leaves so see, now that these petals or these flowers are much more detailed and exciting, I don't really feel like there needs to be any more open blooms. I might hint at um, some buds because there's some buds in the reference that I'm looking at, the botanical reference. So first I'm going to do some leaves and then, um, then I'll add maybe just some subtle bud shapes down there. Okay, so I'll just use the same green that I had for my stem and we'll do the first layer of leaves that way. And then I always kind of stylize my leaves. I don't really try to go um, super <laughs> accurate with the type of leaves, but these ones are, these ones actually are really, really similar to how um, primrose leaves actually are in the photo I'm looking at, so that's fortunate. <laughs> there we go. And then we've got one that's coming here. And let's see, I think there's like a hint of a leaf going right there. And then I'll add in the buds and then we'll add some more um, definition to the greens. So I just see in the image that I'm looking at just sort of like they're these cylindrical kind of shapes. So actually I'm just gonna hint at them sort of like, like that and I think that's enough. Um, I feel like there's a lot of empty space right here so I'm gonna add one more leaf for composition sake. There we go. And now I'm going to lighten up this green with some white and do um, some sort of a second layer, sort of some highlights on my leaves. Okay. Just brighten these guys up a little bit. And we'll add a little bit of it to the stem as well. Yeah, that helps them pop because the, um, the stem was pretty, the stem and leaf base color it was pretty similar in value to the background color and so as it dried even it got a little darker and so it was starting to disappear. So adding a bit of a highlight and I might even come in um, with another color on the leaves. I'll see when I'm done here if I, if I feel like it needs it. Okay. Those guys a little bit. Whoops, there. 
Um, yeah, I feel like the leaves still need something. I think I'm going to pull a warmer tone into them with the, my yellow ochre. They're just a little on the side, like, cooler. They look a little flat. So actually, I'm going to just go for a really warm ochre green color. So let's see. Um, we'll just add a little bit of a, a highlight. See, it just kind of livens them up. I think the stem could use it here and there too. I won't trace the whole stem. I think I'll just do some little parts of it like that. And maybe we'll make the stem extend down a little further. I like that. There. Okay. So now I'm just thinking, I think that uh, the, everything is pretty much the way I want it. I'm wondering if there's any more interesting texture that I want to add to the background. Should we let the flower shine? Here, I'll hold it up for you guys. Okay, so what do you guys think? Should there be texture or should I leave it the plain? Mm, I'm on the border. Okay, I think I think maybe I will add just a little bit of something exciting, like maybe a bit darker shade of blue in the background. Um, I'm just going to add some hints of it and maybe that will even add some more contrast to the green. So I'm gonna go ahead and darken this uh, turquoisey blue color I have down in my bottom corner here from before. Uh, let's see, okay. And I'm gonna water it down, something that's kind of fun is to water it down so it can kind of do more washes, especially on this paper. That's slightly darker. Let me see. I think I'll go, oops, that went too green. So now I got to get some more blue in there. Okay. So I'm just going to go right up against the edge of some of these and just add some definition. This might be a good guy, a good idea. This might be a bad idea. <laughs> Let's see. Eh, that's kind of fun. Get a little water on my brush and just sort of blend it. I kind of like that blended look where it's a little softer at the edge. Oh, that's nice. I like that. I'll make it a bit darker up against this edge. And I almost like the idea of the background on one side of the page being um, different than the background on the other side. So let's see. I'll, con I'll continue it up here a little bit. So I have to be careful around the edge of my flower because it's a little wet still. There we go. Okay, and I think I'll continue it up over the top a bit and see how I'm feeling about that. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I am using a different paper than I used on my painting yesterday. And I um, I was noticing as I painted, I was painting on Bristol paper, which was lighter. I think it was like 98 pounds. And it was getting really ripply. And I don't paint on paper all that often. And so I um, didn't quite know what to expect from the type of painting that I was doing, um, whether it, the paper was heavy enough to handle the thick acrylic that I was painting. 
and it actually got pretty ripply and it kind of dried ripply less so than when it was wet but it was still pretty kind of you know more than I would like and so um I decided to switch over to this amazing acrylic paper that I just got and it is like 200 and something pounds and it is Strathmore acrylic paper so that's what I'm painting on right now and I um, really like it. You can see there's still a little, like if you look at the edge of the paper, there's still a little bit of a wave to it, but way less than there was before. And I feel like it's going to dry so that the curl really is only near the edges of the paper and not the other paper. The Bristol I was using was like waving like this across the whole face of the page. And so it, um, you know, you couldn't really, you were getting light on some areas and shadow on others. So it was just e even a little bit hard to, to see the whole image the way it was supposed to look. So I am really liking this one so far. And I guess I could always use watercolor paper, but I um, didn't really want the tooth in my paintings, like the texture of it. I like painting on smooth paper um, just because that doesn't, inter I don't know, it doesn't interfere with... Um, the, I don't know. I like the smoother look, I guess. Um, and I don't know if watery acrylic really, um, how that behaves really on, on watercolor paper, if it pools the way that as beautifully as actual watercolor paint would. So I'm going to go ahead and just, um, kind of fade this out actually. Oops. I forgot about the middle here. A little touch of this dark and I feel like that's a little too detailed for this large brush and so I'm going to um, switch back over to my small round brush and add it's like a touch of it in there it doesn't have to be super precise just so that you can kind of see a little bit there there. I like that. And then I'm almost running out of my color. So I'm going to just fade it and maybe let it be a bit darker down here and then a little lighter in the middle. And I like that about sort of brushy washy backgrounds. They don't have to be consistent, you know, all across the entire page. It's actually more visually interesting to have them not be consistent. Um, so I've been playing with that in my other, my canvas paintings um, recently and I really love that that feeling of movement that you can get instead of painting it just completely solid having a bit of a, a brushy texture and a variation is really lovely so I'm going for that and I sh maybe should have just painted this whole background a little bit darker to start with so I'll have to think about that for next time just water it down and bring it around this bottom corner basically out of my color so it's not going to be as dark on this side okay I think we're there all right, so I'm gonna turn it around. You guys can see the final, whoopsie, the final piece. Here we are. There they, there they are without trying to lay it down in my paint. So there we are. There's our primroses for day two. I'll go ahead and post a, um, a finished photo so you can see the colors maybe a little bit better um, in my feed. Thanks for joining me, you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.